Hi, it's Andy again, and uh, I'm going to do a video on uh, Android Studio since its update. Uh, well, since its original release, since that's the last time I did a video on Android Studio. So, this is the Linux version of it. Uh, on Windows and Mac, you get an icon that you can click and it just launches. Um, you can do that in Linux, I'm sure, by just adding it to your path, but I've, you know, it's not that hard just to do this. Um, so the executable for Android Studio is uh, stored in the bin folder uh, and then you can just launch it. So <clears throat> there's Android Studio, it's launching. This is the current version as of this video which is 0 0.3.7. Uh, up until this version they've been updating it quite frequently but it stayed on 3 point, uh, 0 0.3.7 for quite a while now. Um, this is just a, a Hello World project. What uh, I wanted to go through is actually starting a new project from scratch. So we'll just start another Hello World 2. Oh. We'll call this Hello World. And then you see it tells you you want to change that from example to whatever you use, which I use Ruffles. Um, you got your minimum SDK, which determines what's going to go down here for the support mode. If I change this to like 11, this all goes away except for grid layout. But if I go to 7, uh, you'll see that we get fragments and action bar. Now this action bar is a replacement for action bar Sherlock. If you're used to using action bar Sherlock, this is kind of similar. It's Google's implementation of it, but it allows you to use uh, an action bar way back. I, I'm not exactly quite sure how back, how far back, but it definitely works in gingerbread, possibly before that too. Um, so that's what we're going to do is actually show it on uh, gingerbread right here. Uh, so we'll just set it up. So it's going to build this. And here you go. So this is what happens when you create an app. Um, you get your fragment because it's going to automatically build a fragment now for you, which is awesome. Your activity main, which is what your activity is going to launch, which is your blank uh, frame layout. Um, and this is actually what your fragment's going to uh, launch instead. And it, it automatically creates the code for you to uh, replace it. And it's going to work automatically for you on... Um, so here's your, um, your main activity. And it's got your fragment and everything in it. Uh, but it's automatically going to work on rotations, which if you don't do this part right here, um, as soon as you have a bunch of fragments in there and you rotate the screen, it doesn't keep the, 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 the same fragment. It just goes to whatever your original fragment was. So this is what the saved instance state is. It, it's required if you're going to have a screen rotation. So here's uh, your... Um, uh, replace, you're setting your content view to that frame layout and then you're replacing that frame layout with uh, this placeholder fragment which is down here um, your placeholder fragment and it's just a fragment but one thing you'll notice is instead of uh, fragment activity or just activity you're uh, extending action bar activity now this is the compatibility activity that's required for the the newer um, uh, app compat library so that this can all work pretty seamlessly before um, before honeycomb and uh, notice you're still extending a support fragment manager so you're still using the other the support fragment like that's a support fragment you can see that if you go into your imports and that you are using a support fragment here and uh, so if we run this uh, 
And this is a fresh install of Android Studio. So uh, not all of my virtual machines work. It, it just works with what I've already downloaded so far. Uh, because I have um, Eclipse also on this computer, um, it does the Android virtual device manager um, does link back to the virtual devices that are created with Eclipse. So if you open that, you'll see that. Um, so I want to use our gingerbread, so I'm going to select this ginger. Or actually, no. Um, We'll do, yeah, we'll just, I think this is a Nexus 1. If I, I this is uh, built off of a Nexus 1. So let's launch that one instead. Yeah, I think that's about Nexus 1 screen size. Oh, fantastic. Oh, let's use it. Um. <laughs> okay, so there's something wrong with this AVD, but if you see that there is definitely an action bar on top, um, and it's built in from the uh, Google library, and you don't have to import uh, action bar Sherlock. It's kind of implemented the same way, except you're you're using instead of the support library, you're using the app compat library, which also imports the support library, which is why you're using um, older, uh, I mean, the, the fragments for older devices. Let's try to get that to actually look better. So I'm going to use the Gingy small one. Uh, I created a small gingerbread device kind of to simulate like a really, really old phone because. Um, I found out that some of my users of one of my app have phone screen sizes with a resolution this small. So we'll, we'll test it out on this one because I know this works without force closing. As you can see um, down here, this is your DDMS. Uh, you can still launch DDMS if you want to, but um, this is probably your a, a nice easier way to do it because you have all the IDE components here and you can still filter. Um, let's say you put logs in your in your code, you can filter them out here. Um, but yeah, here's the action bar. You can add stuff using the menu. So if you wanted to add stuff, you can use that here and then. Uh, the reason why I'm actually not quite sure why oh I know why because this has a menu button if you click menu you still get this uh, if I change it in here to show as action always um, I think it's always we relaunch it, it'll show it as um, an action bar item. Oh. oh, I have my other. Okay, see, so now here it's shown as an action bar item. Okay, so that's that part of it. And let's go through some other parts of Android Studio. So if you want to do a screen capture, you you have to have a device running. So that was kind of stupid that I closed it. So we'll relaunch the, let's do um, a Nexus 4 running KitKat. There's also a feature built into KitKat that applies to this button right here to screen record. And uh, you can record the screen for demo videos. Um, I plan on using that soon, actually, for one of my apps, because um, it's a lot nicer than trying to do the screen record um, once I figure that out. <laughs> okay, so 
here's the app. It's running in uh, Android 4.4, and you can do a screen capture, which is kind of what the only real purpose of um, the DMS was for for me before. Um, actually, this seems doesn't seem to work in newer versions of Android. I don't know why, but it seems to not like to work on that. Uh, I was able to get it to work earlier today on Gingerbread. So let me see if I can do that on Gingerbread. And then the, the screen capture also didn't really work for me. Uh, it's a Nexus, um, it's a Android 4.4 um, feature anyway. Uh, that one crashed, so let's do that one. I think, I don't think it, it actually works with a, a Gingerbread um, virtual device. So that's why I'm leaving. I don't think it'll even highlight. That's why the screen record, uh, the screen capture works, but just, yeah, it's not clickable on a, on a gingerbread device. But if I had a, the Android 4.4, it becomes clickable. So let's do a screen capture, show that this works. So your screen capture works on a small device. It might be a memory settings issue with the computer or the device. I don't know, um, but it doesn't seem to work on a on a Android 4.4. But it definitely works on Gingerbread. So let's exit that, and uh, if we go here to run, you can see if you have any issues with it um, compiling and running, you'll get that here. Um, since we're using a um, Google derived code it doesn't actually fail so this this runs very nicely um, sometimes you might get that the local path doesn't exist I get that uh, whenever uh, Android Studio seems to update and do a major update what uh, I found is if you delete everything associated with Android Studio except for your your projects it um, it it seems to resolve itself once you set it up again. It's annoying, it's uh, very stupid, but um, sometimes I, that's my only real complaint really with uh, Android Studio is that whenever you do a major update, it, um, it may take a while to get back up and running exactly where you were before. Another nice thing is you get a terminal. You can, uh, what I found this useful for is if I have a database in an app, I can actually, go into the database and make sure all the tables were built correctly. It's uh, pretty cool um, to do that through the terminal and you don't have to leave the IDE. Uh, if we go back into our project, uh, I like how the XML files have the little preview. Um, a lot more of the views have been added since release so drawer layout I think actually has um, somewhat of a view. Uh, instead of just saying, oh, sorry, I can't generate a view for this. Um, if you saw in the other project I had, this Nexus 5 here, um, it actually doesn't sh pull up from a device here, but if you go into this part and say preview all screen sizes, you can select the Nexus 5 from down here, and it actually works. Um, you you uh, select it, uh, and double click it, and then they, um, so, uh, let's see, oh no, the Nexus 5 disappeared, oh well. Oh, that's because I... And if you have a horizontal layout, you can test it, what it would look like on a horizontal screens, which is pretty cool. Uh, to make a new uh, resource file uh, folder, uh, this is pretty neat. Um, you, you would select Android Resource Directory. Uh, let's say I want to target something with a screen uh, screen width. Uh, let's say a layout. We'll do screen width. 
and then um, 720 uh, pixels. So we're we are now creating a resource folder uh, that checks to see if there's a minimum of 720 pixels. So that's kind of cool. Um, and you can select that for like a menu item. So I guess menu, so that it only works with those um, those devices. So that's pretty neat. Um, that's little features you don't get in um, in Eclipse. Uh, one thing that is kind of annoying is this build.gradle uh, file. It's annoying because it's new to me. That's the only reason why I don't like it. <laughs> but uh, any changes you're going to make, instead of doing it in the manifest, uh, the IDE requires you to, to make those changes in the build.gradle for it to work with the IDE. So let's say I'm, I change this to, or on the manifest, let's say I change this to 11 on Eclipse, that's where you would change it to target, um, um, or to change the minimum SDK version. Uh, if I change this to 11, it doesn't do anything. And if I try, it'll let me build it and compile it and run it on uh, a gingerbread device and crash. Uh, so the Android manifest file for this uses SDK is pretty much useless to the uh, IDE now. Um, that's where this build.gradle comes in. Uh, you get your, um, this, this part right here replaces that part on the uses SDK from the manifest. Um, and you're, you want to make sure that you're on the latest version of these at all times. Same with the, the version of Gradle that you're using. Uh, as well as uh, if you're going to use the support library, this is different. If you're going to use the app compat library, you use this. And if you start a new project and you, you select fragment, it's, it imports the, the support library instead of the app compat. So, um, when you're setting up the project, kind of determine then where you're going to go with your app long term. But I mean, if you make a wrong decision, no big deal. You can change the settings here in the build.gradle and then build the app. See, it builds, make sure there's, there's no errors. And then, um, then you're good to go afterwards. So this is a little bit of a review of where uh, Android Studio has come since its initial release. And let me know what you think in the comments. Okay, have a good day.